This summer, our group decided to explore and research the topic of youth poverty. We first went out on the streets to collect people's opinions on their perspectives on poverty. What does poverty mean to me? It's a big problem, obviously. Lack of opportunities. You're struggling to afford it. After hearing the general public, we talked to Emmett. Someone who was personally affected by the issue, and he shared his story with us. My name is Emmett Dysar. During the time of me being homeless, uh, I would depend on friends and family a lot. Uh, sometimes people I just met. I imagine uh, what you're going to eat that night. Like There's just so many different obstacles mentally that you have to jump through. When I was homeless, uh, thank God I'm not right now. Uh, my mental stability was uh, like very um, just like everywhere, kind of how it is now. Uh, I've always um, thought about like um, my family and how how much mental illness there actually is in this world, and um, I try to be as optimistic as possible. Right now in life, I'm uh, going to college active in my community and trying my best to be a, a positive influence for my family. So the, the process of getting there was just time, but as far as uh, where I'm at, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not any different than where I was. So I think that um, the, city, the city, if they were asked to do something to end um, youth homelessness or just youth that are impoverished, um, they could create more programs like the ones that, that already exist um, for youth who are homeless and they could add more funding to the HUD program, the housing development program for youth who are homeless. So just continuing what they're already doing but at a much higher rate. Talk to youth who are in poverty uh, on a regular basis and uh, one thing that always comes across a uh, conversation between I and them is um, just the fact that uh, they could quit and take the easy easy way out and something that I, I try to help people see is that if you, if you just keep going just a little bit longer you'll be able to actually win and overcome any obstacle that was in your way hop any barrier so just just keep going and don't don't give up you're almost there Next, we went to Youth Prize and met up with Wookie Wheel and Nisi Parker. To learn about what they do and what services and programs they provide, there are for youth facing poverty in Minnesota. My name is Wookie Wheel. I'm the president of Youth Prize. My name is Denicia Parker, a.k.a. Nisi Parker, and I'm the youth engagement manager here. Our mission is to champion learning beyond the classroom. To ensure all Minnesota youth thrive. Minnesota is a very great state, but to continue to be a very great state, we have to find ways to meaningfully and authentically engage our young people. So I don't really believe that young people are the leaders of tomorrow. I believe they can lead right now. So having that youth voice always present in what we do at every level is very, very important to me. It always has been it's part of my passion. And I think we're a better organization because of that. I think the most basic need I can think about is just the fact that hunger is a real issue in Minnesota. And a young person once said to me, don't ask me to be brilliant if I'm hungry. So one of the things we did in response to that statement was to really be thoughtful about establishing a, a nutrition program. I don't think anybody deserves to be hungry, and I don't think anybody deserves to live in poverty. It is impossible for young people to succeed when they are focusing on survival. I think the biggest basic need that is not being met, especially in the state of Minnesota, is economic resources and economic opportunities. If anybody is experiencing poverty, it ultimately affects everybody else. I think it's everybody's business. How do we eliminate homelessness so that everybody can do well? It's impossible to want a young person to succeed without them having a financial force to back them. 
but we have invested a lot in making sure that young people have jobs and young people have um, kind of a clear career pathways. The Youth Bank Project is a youth philanthropy model where young people start by investigating what is needed in the community for the community to do well. Uh, one of our projects funded a barber shop within a high school um, because they recognize that everyone deserves to look uh, well in that, you know, having a nice haircut is part of um, looking very good. So another um, project that we like is a group funded um, transportation um, provided scholarships um, to driver ed, um, recognizing that transportation is an issue and a lot of people cannot participate in after school programs because they don't drive. So I, I thought that was a very innovative way to respond to that, you know, funding the scholarships. Um, I don't know if an adult would have thought of that. Another group funded hygiene bags, you know, just with like basic stuff like toothpaste and deodorant and stuff to teens that were homeless. After learning about youth packs and some of the projects they supported, we went to visit youth packs, which was one of the programs Wookie Way mentioned. We spoke with Ria Ocean and two youth who were involved with this program. We've been working on this youth pack program. We had this idea of a youth pack as like a backpack, something that they could use. We're really thinking about the health of homeless youth and not just, yes, they're hungry, yes, they don't have a place necessarily to crash, but also just being hygienic and feeling good, like I can get through this day, now I'm a little fresher, a little cleaner. So the whole process was just, it was all youth integrated. It's something that I'm passionate about and I really feel like um, the students who have been involved and especially the ones who started it are really seeing their idea grow and become a reality. I'm Delaney and I was doing the cost of everything. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm Deborah and I did the shopping. The youth pack, I guess, helps out homeless youth and gives them supplies that they could use. For our females, we provide like tampons and pads and, uh, and then there's socks and toothbrushes and Colgate and like, and then over there is like uh, deodorant and like first aid kits and stuff. So we want them to be full. We, want, we don't want any room in the backpack when they go out. We have 50 right now, and our goal is to do over 100. I'm so excited for when we give them out because I just feel like that's going to be such a great um, a way for us to give back and for our, the students that I work with to really feel like they're giving back and to feel grateful for what they have. Next, we sat down with Krista DeBoer to discuss Youth Prize Nutrition Program and learn more about how it works. My name is Krista DeBoer, and I am the Nutrition Program Director for Youth Prize. The Youth Price Nutrition Program is a program that was established to bring food and nutrition education to the communities throughout Minnesota. And then we're kind of adding on um, additional education and healthy activities to kind of establish a real need and fill what's not happening that should be happening. I would say this program is really important because a lot of the youth that we serve wouldn't otherwise be getting that food or may not be getting food of similar quality. So between staffing and the rules in themselves built into the, the federal program, that's really what restricts us on what we can and cannot do that we have to work really hard to combat, but also fluctuate to make sure that the sites can do the food, that the youth can get the meals. What's propelled me to keep fighting and to keep doing this is everyone has the right to food. There's no reason it shouldn't happen. So in the years to come, I really see, a, I really see us A, um, expanding statewide. The hunger issue just isn't in the metro. It's all across the state. It's all across the country. So I want to try to work with other organizations and other partners to get the food to every border of Minnesota, but also get additional programs to the communities that really need them, that are seeing the issues, that maybe don't feel like they have assistance out there. We talked to Kelly Murray about Washington's Eagles Canteen, a program she helped start at Washington Technology Magnet School. My name is Kelly Murray and I'm a teaching assistant at Washington Technology Magnet School. This program is called Eagles Canteen. Typically all the kids at Washington get free breakfast. I started the program because I saw, like I said, a lot of waste with the, the food that the kids eat. We just decided to 
um, do something about it, collect it all, and give it back to the kids that need it the most. I would hope that it can be implemented in the rest of the school districts. So that's the biggest impact, I think, is they can take this food, grab the food at the end of the day, take it with them, and eat it throughout the night. Lastly, our group talked to Deborah Loon and Kelly Brazil from Avenues for Homeless Youth, who provide housing services and programs for homeless youth. My name is Deb Loon. I'm the Executive Director at Avenues for Homeless Youth. My name is Kelly. Uh, I do case management with the Connect GLBT Host Home Program. Our mission is actually to help youth who are experiencing homelessness move from surviving the streets to thriving young adults, and we do that by providing shelter. These are home for our youth for a temporary basis. Our goal is to provide them safety and stability and then lots of support so they can, can begin to have hope for their future and develop goals for themselves. There's a million reasons why and how young people experience homelessness. Generally speaking, uh, young people oftentimes are homeless with their families or they become homeless or experience, experience homelessness because of other issues like racism, like poverty, like grandma has Section 8 and can't have their, their child or their grandchild living with them, uh, their mother or father, somebody's been deported. Most of our youth in the Twin Cities who are homeless are youth of color and they are disproportionately youth who are LGBTQ. Queer youth in particular uh, are harassed in school, on the street. We really need to get these kids into safety. Two of our host home programs are programs that support youth who identify as queer and trans specifically. One is called the GLBT Host Home Program and the other is called the Connect Host Home Program. The GLBT Host Home Program, we offer young people longer term stays. The Connect Host Home Program is our newer program and it's a shorter term, more shelter-like stay. But we get to watch them as they go on this journey of really developing a plan for their future and doing things like graduating from high school and getting jobs and finding a place to live or sometimes reuniting with their family. Youth poverty is a big issue in today's society. Many people overlook this issue. But we can try to fix it. We can put together a drive to encourage people to donate supplies to youth packs at the premiere of this documentary. You can do something too. By donating to a local organization that helps youth in poverty. By volunteering or helping to raise awareness. We learn by doing. And we hope we enchant your perspective in youth poverty. Thank you Thank for watching you. our video. Documentary.